All right, guys, the day is finally here. I've been telling you guys that I, I was going to review casual lifestyle shoes this summer, and um, today's the day. So the biggest debate on my channel has always been whether or not a shoe is a running shoe or is it a casual shoe that is styled as a running shoe. So as the title says, today I will be reviewing the Nike EXP X14. So today I will be giving you my thoughts on what I think about the shoe as a running shoe. Okay, so starting off with the upper, we got an all mesh one piece upper with fly wire. Wait, what? Oh, you guys don't want me to like talk about it? You want me to like go outside and run? But it's, it's raining outside, guys. I don't want. Oh, you don't care? <sighs> All right. Wilma, cue the music. Let's go outside. So like I was saying, is the Nike EXP X14 an adequate running shoe? Well let's break it down and find out. So in the upper, we have a mesh material that has an almost plastic feel to it. It kind of reminds me of the Nike Zoom Fly upper. It's fairly thin. It has a translucent look which allows you to see through to the fly wire on the sides. The fly wire itself gives the shoe a bit more support through the midfoot and all the way through the lacing. It gets the job done in most cases. The upper is essentially one piece that has a sock like fit and the tongue and heel are very thin and has barely any padding at all. It's basically just an extension of the upper. So I noticed there is no real true heel cup in the shoe. The heel support comes mostly from the extended midsole that kind of cups your foot from the bottom of the heel. And the color itself has a felt like suede material feel to it. And honestly, I kind of like the look of the change up of the different materials. And so you have some EXP X14 branding on the sides which gives the shoe a cool experimental prototype theme to it. So the mesh actually didn't feel too bad while running. It was breathable enough to where I couldn't complain, but the upper itself was pretty unstable for the most part, especially in the heel. I kept feeling like the heel was slipping no matter what I did. I tried adjusting the laces which helped and hurt. And I say hurt because the rope laces put so much pressure against a thin tongue. No matter what I did, there was no winning this battle. So yeah. The toe box was a bit odd. I thought it was going to be super narrow and snug, but it was actually decent. I tried a half size up and my normal running shoe size and both worked, but the half size up gave me a little more width in the toe box. So as a running shoe, I would actually go up half a size. So the midsole uses Nike's latest cushioning technology in the React Foam in combination of a nylon infused plate for a more responsive ride. If you have seen my epic React review, you would know how much I enjoy that soft, plush, bouncy feel of React. And the thought of combining that with a nylon plate like in the Zoom Fly was going to be a match made in heaven. And well, in this shoe, I felt like Nike punked us. It was nowhere near the feeling of the Epic React. The X14s were so much more stiff, had way less give, and just felt dead on my foot. I'm not sure if Nike just put a little React in the shoe, or maybe they decided to water down the recipe with hopes to make the Kool-Aid last longer. But nah bruh, I ain't having it. Like even on short runs, I try to think of it as a responsive speed shoe, like the Zoom Fly, which gave me some hope. But yeah, that was just wishful thinking. And when I tried taking these for a longer run, I just wanted to stop, call me a lift, and get a ride back. Like for real, it was bad. Anyway, the entire bottom of the shoe is covered with rubber. I was able to run fine on dry road, but on wet road, it was pretty slick. And on wet grass, it was just a mess. But to be fair, this would be considered a road shoe, if anything. But what killed this shoe the most was just how stiff it was. Now I have tried plenty of shoes, from many brands. From neutral shoes to stability shoes, heck, even the Brooks Beast. But when I tell you this shoe is one of the stiffest shoes I've ever tried running or in lifestyle, bruh, it's bad. And I know some people are going to give me the Vapor Max excuse and say it needs to break in, but I'll leave that to you guys. I only put in three runs of three to five miles each, but I'm not willing to go any more than that with hopes that it will get better. So as a lifestyle shoe, the shoe looks great. I love the unique style and the creativity, and while walking around, you may not notice the stiffness. I mean, hey, wear it with some joggers, or whatever the kids wear nowadays, and you're good. But if you're still wanting this as a dedicated running shoe, I guess you'll just have to learn from your own mistakes. Finish him! Brutality.
But seriously, kids, for running, don't do it. And stay in school.